Hello and welcome to Mama Likes. If you are looking for Montessori inspired material and toys for your child at home, then you are in luck. Because I have with me here today, Miss Payal Patel. Hello, Namaste. Payal, thank you so much for joining us today. So Payal here is the director and founder of the Montessori School International, which was founded in 2012. She's a qualified Montessori directress for children aged between two to nine. And she was born and brought up in UK, right? Yes, in UK, but she decided to come to India, thank God, to pursue her passion as an educator. Okay, so before we start with all the toys and the material that you can buy at home, my first question to you, Payal, why Montessori? There's many, many reasons why, uh, but the things which drew me to the method uh, was uh, the child-centric nature of the method. Okay. Uh, it's holistic, which means it's uh, we deal with the child on the emotional level, social level, uh, spiritual level also. Uh, also, um, it's uh, we, we, we're following the child's interest and readiness. So okay, that is really probably the key of the whole method where we follow the child. Okay. Um, other things like it's a mixed age group is also fantastic. It's got many benefits also. So when you say mixed age group has fantastic benefits, like why is it that? Because most of the schools nowadays, we see, uh, especially the play groups as well, they will have, they're very strict about, you know, a two and a half year old will be only with a two and a half year old, not even a two and 2.8 months or three years, especially when they're enrolling in those schools. So why is it that only with Montessori we see that, you know, in the same class, there will be kids who are, you know, four years old, there will be kids who are two years old. Mm -hmm. how, and how do you, you know, go about teaching one topic to different age groups? So each um, child is working on their own activities and creating their own educational path. Right. And why the mixed age group works, and actually it's, it's, there's so much benefits to it, is um, for the older child, the older children, uh, they have um, the opportunity to uh, form leadership skills, show the younger ones, take care of them, right. crystallize their knowledge further when they are showing these more basic activities, so maybe joining some dots in their mind. Yeah. Um, and then for the younger ones, it's more organic learning. Right. They're watching the older ones do yeah. activities yeah. that they're not ready for yet, mm. but will be soon or right. in the future. So it also get, builds um, their motivation to work on activities That's to build on their progress. You know, I mean, what you just what she just said, it's not only in a school. So I have a lot of mothers and my friends who tell me have a second child, they are, they, it'll be, it's, it's super easy. The second child will, you know, just grow up on its own because he or she will learn from the first child. I haven't got there yet, but uh, this it, it actually works even you know in real life situations at home. I'm, I'm not even saying in school. It's not just a Montessori method or anything. It, it literally happens with everyone who has two kids, three kids, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Yeah. So I think we should start with the okay. Yes. Before we get started, so we are going to be showing four practical four skills, right? Yes. So that's practical, practical life skills, uh, math. Uh, language and the fourth one is sensorial sensorial so what we're going to do is for all the skills we're going to show different materials that you can buy for your child and how to use it and how it can actually last you for the next two three four years maybe mm -hmm. yes let's get started so what do we start with first uh, the practical life activities okay yes. cool let's start okay so first up we have the practical life skills can you just give like a small introduction on what kind of why practical life I mean, they anyways get to do it at home, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes. why? At home, things aren't always child size. Here, everything has a, we make it into a purpose. So, um, you'll see as you, we walk, walk through the activities, everything has a purpose and the children would work on it to achieve something. Right. Which um, gives them that satisfaction of, oh, okay, I've achieved, achieved something, they want to repeat it. 
um, and there's, the, there's four main purposes to these activities. One is to build their coordination of movement. Okay. One is to, um, the second is to build their concentration. Hmm. Third is uh, the independence, of course. And the fourth is social adaptation. So what that means is to be able to orient themselves quite naturally in whichever environment they're in. Okay, yes, let's start. Okay, so we'll start with an activity called beading, beading. or lacing. Mm. So with this, it's a you would the child would hold the string and as you would right. just right. pretend. Yeah. Okay. So this is one of the initial activities you would show uh, to the child when they enter the Montessori environment. Okay. Okay. It's a very comforting um, and it helps them settle in. Right, you know what actually, so I have covered something similar, so it's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be like this, you get this in various forms and shapes and whatever, uh, it seems very easy to us, but this is a task for kids, right, mm -hmm. I mean especially when they're just introduced to it, how long do they take to, you know, build this skill? It can take, um, every child's different, of so course, it's difficult yes. to answer that, but yeah. I would say On an average. Um, if they come in at the age of two, hmm. um, maybe a month to really be able to do it completely by themselves, and they, but they always love to do it, so it's something even our, our three yeah, They love olds, repetition, right? Yes, they absolutely. Love them, yeah. So even our three-year-olds, four-year-olds will take it once in a while, work with it, even though they have mastered it. Okay, nice. Uh, first, I like to say in the home environment, this is very easy to make. Yeah. yeah. So it's something if you want to kind of occupy your child, get a bowl, get a whisk, get some water, a little bit of uh, soap. And what the enjoyment in this activity for the child is when they obviously do the whisking and see the bubbles. So that ah, is right. the achievement. They are whisking enough to see the bubbles. All right, yeah. right. So, right. and again, that repetition, they love it. Our two year olds, three year olds, four year olds, even five year olds, they return to this activity nice. all the time. You know what? Actually, there are so many of these materials at Montessori that, you know, you don't need to even buy them online. They are things that you can actually, you have them at home. So we'll keep showing you, but this is like a beginner, like this is the startup where it's a bowl, it's uh, it's water filled with soap and this, I mean, everyone has this. You don't have to always buy everything, you know, online or from a store. You can just figure things out, mm -hmm. take the main concept Absolutely. and then sort of apply it to whatever you have even at home. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just, you know, these are just ideas, you know, like what you can do. Yeah. Next we have is folding napkins. Mm -hmm. Can you teach this to our husbands as well? Of <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell me. I hope they're watching. <laughs> yes. Please watch. Please. <laughs> so, see this line? So, they basically what they've done is, if you yeah. can see the uh, napkin guys, they have uh, stitched over here like a line, a thin line, so that the child can, you please explain better. Yes. <laughs> so, this is a folding line. So we would generally show it, show the line to the child and then begin the process of folding it. So what you'll see is we're being very accurate when we show the child with our finger movements. Hmm. And uh, it's because the child is learning step by step. So they're even also watching you every Right. Every movement That's true. of your finger. Yeah. And my daughter is obsessed with this right now. So yeah. I, I'm loving it. So she, not just with folding napkins, she be like, let me fold the clothes. She knows, how, she already knows how to fold her t-shirts. She wants to tuck in the, you know, mattress under the bed. She's loving this. This is her favorite life skill right now. <laughs> <laughs> then the next one is pouring liquids. It's funneling. Funneling, yes. sorry, funneling. <laughs> I'm very bad with these terms. <laughs> I know the concepts, but terminology, terrible. Yes. So it's a simple activity which, are, you know, again, it just looks straight away, you know the purpose. Yeah. You put the funnel in, the water, you pour. Right. So this is, again, we have two here for the child to learn judgment. Okay, so if there's this much water. If they're overflowing, the child sees, they'll have to get a sponge, wipe it, realize their own spillage. Right. Um, so we're teaching them also judgment for this. Nice. Yeah. Nice. 
Lovely. So since we're on to pouring liquids, she's going to show pouring liquids in three different glasses now. Why the why three glasses? So mm -hmm. if you can just explain to the viewers. Yes, again, like the funneling activity, it's about building the child's judgment. So ensuring they're putting the same amount of liquid in every glass. Yes. So right. it's also an indirect preparation for mathematics. So div division. That scary word, maths. Yes. Yes. Definitely so for is, me, even at this age. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, Nice, okay, cool. The next in practical skills we have the... This is a window cleaning activity. The window cleaning activity. So this is, these are all the cleaning materials. I think these are my favorite. Mm -hmm. I am a clean freak and I'm turning my daughter into one. Okay, yeah. so, uh, so yes, there are cleaning activities, which are what we call in Montessori as care of environment activities. Okay. So this is cleaning the windows. Uh, so child would spray, wipe, and then, if need be, use a sponge to clean any spillages. Like this, there's many other activities like uh, cleaning play equipment, uh, cleaning the chalky. So whatever else in the home environment, you can uh, make activities quite easily. Yeah, I think, you know, it's so important to imbibe some a basic value like cleaning and, you know, being aware of your environment and having a a clean environment from the beginning uh, how do you you know more than anything else so right now I'm lucky okay that my daughter listens to me when I tell her you need to put your toys back in place uh, you need to put your books back in place or whatever it is how do you ensure because she's sort of getting there where she's like no she just says no sometimes so how do you ensure that that continues where they continue listening to you saying okay i will clean my toys i will keep things back in place or you know whatever that is mm -hmm. how how is that one line i want one so i think the key is to give the child logic on okay. why it's important to do whatever so so for example for this uh, putting away toys it would be um, if you put your toys away, then you can find them where you put them. Yes, Ooh. which is the next one now? So we can carry on with the care of Oh yeah, right, okay, this one. So this is um, self-explanatory. It's a dustpan and brush. So child size. Uh, so it's again encouraging the child to clean up after, if they have made a mess, to be able to clean up um, their own mess which uh, again is a life skill. Yeah, of course. So the next activity in practical skills is slicing. So again, quite self-explanatory. So in our environment, we have an activity of clay, a knife and a chopping board, of course, a blunt knife. And we would teach a child how to slice. In our environment, we have clay, but sometimes we do have real fruit so in your home environment, you can, mm -hmm. instead of having clay, give a child to chop the banana with yeah, 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 yeah. That actually, wow, that's actually nice. I never thought of that, honestly. I've always been using clay all this while. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I'm trying to say that mm -hmm. they are very basic and anyone and anyone and everyone is probably doing it in, in, yes. in their own way. But they're not focusing on each one of them because each one of them actually has its own benefits mm -hmm. in sort of so how do I say that? I think all of the different skills draw um, builds the child's independence in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea of the activities is to make them fully independent. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and to build their confidence that they, they can do for themselves yeah. and not inferior to yeah. their environment, right? Okay. So I think that's you can maybe mm -hmm. see. So guys, I think uh, at least till now, whatever we've seen in the practical skills, the practical life skills, yes, they seem extremely practical, obviously, and they seem very simple. But I think a lot of us don't end up, and we, yeah, we definitely must be doing them in some or the other way, but we don't end up focusing on every activity that has been shown uh, and give it that much time and focus because uh, because if you end up actually doing that it will definitely make your child independent it will make your child confident 
and I mean what else do you want at that age right the next one again a very simple activity squeezing so my daughter does it all the time at home I think she's learned it in school only obviously and she loves it it keeps her engaged for a very long time so guys try this at home you'll be sorted you can do your activities aram se for at least 10 minutes mm -hmm, yeah definitely okay so sponge we'll dip it in the water put it into the squeezer and squeeze nice okay now the next one what do we have piled we have needlework so it's one of the initial needlework activities which then they would uh, move on to other activities like sewing buttons etc so here we go I think these are easily available online right absolutely yeah. yes while the others are available at home you don't need to venture out these you can easily buy online mm -hmm. because you don't want to give real needles at this age Next is something to do with buttons. Now, what would you call this? It's uh these are all our dressing frame activities. So this is a small button frame activity. So in Montessori we have many many different dressing frames. So this is a small button frame. We have the large button frame, we have the buckle fr frame, buckle we, frame. Yes, the okay. buckle frame, okay. the belt. Uh also we have the bow frame, the lace frame. Uh, so oh, okay. and those I'm sure will be quite easy all available. Yeah, I have seen these actually. I have. Yeah. You're right. Okay. So I'm just Now we move on to the sensorial activities as opposed to the practical ones where most of the stuff we have at home and we can you know sort of make the child use it play with it or whatever it is uh these ones the sensorial toys or material the Montessori material is very different from the usual toys that we buy at home so i she will definitely explain in detail but something as simple as this what is this called color tablets these are the color tablets okay so as opposed yes we all end up buying uh, anything that has to do with color or numbers and you know they end up uh, doing the sorting of colors but what i like about this and what most parents don't know and which is why they don't end up buying is that Montessori toys are designed in such a way that the child sort of you know ends up focusing on that particular object and there is no other distraction there is no unnecessary you know print and play and any fancy stuff happening around it that that's what's come to my attention i mean correct Absolutely. me if i'm wrong and you can elaborate on that so yeah you're right so it's about isolating the quality we're trying to teach the child so here it's red so we would just say it's red You can see how so one is they've obviously been you know uh, kept in as for their color they st the, they learn to sort they learn to identify they learn language uh but this is the preliminary uh, toy right what is and this is the next level is what you were telling me right if you can just explain to them so we have uh this these are color tablets also but here you see different shades of the same color so they're grading so this is a grading activity of colors and the i don't know if i mean can you guys see the viewers so the green may not be so visible on camera but maybe these are more visible so it starts from black and then moves on to white so that's when they learn grading of shades mm -hmm. and colors and whatever it is yeah Can I go back to the yes, color yes, tablets? Yes, so with the color tablets, it's a pairing activity. So they would learn to distinguish different color initially and pair all the colors like that. Next we have our cylindrical blocks, right? Yes. Yeah, can you explain us? Explain to us. This is the first activity children do in a sensorial um area. It's dimension work. So it's simply just taking all the cylinders out. You can see they're all different heights and diameters. And the children would then find the matching and find do the complementary pairing. Okay. So next is the pink tower. So it is again about visual discrimination. So they learn small, large. You can see with this activity also they're building their coordination when they're building it and showing it centered. Each each block is centered. So uh they're using their focus. So there's many indirect uh skills they're also building with this activity. Okay. 
The next one in our sensorial activities. Now this is very interesting. Most parents, I'm sure, once they see it, they will be like, you know, why do I need to buy it? It's a very. Uh, this is something I can probably teach my child with anything at home. But they, they're barrack tablets. Just you know, tell you what they're called. But she will elaborate on why they're so important and how they can teach your child not just about weight, but ten other things while they're figuring out the weight of two different objects. Okay, so uh, so. As you said, it's a barrack, which means uh, judgment of weight. Uh, so we would use a blindfold to work with this activity. And you see there's three uh, different types of weights. Uh, so children are learning to discriminate. Right. Okay, so they would be closing their eyes or wearing the blindfold and sorting. So this is a sorting activity. Hmm. So they would learn the difference between um, sorting, pairing, right. grading, through all of these activities and in particular this is for sorting. Okay. Uh, so the main thing is when obviously you're, cl cl uh, close, you're closing your eyes, you're focusing on a certain particular uh, sense. Okay. So these blindfold activities, they all uh, give you that uh, idea of being able to really isolate that sense right. which you don't usually get that opportunity with right. usual toys. So, so if you can see these are two different colors right and if you they look the same they they probably look like you know they weigh the same but when you hold it there is a slight difference between the two and it's this difference that the child learns to understand yeah. yeah you would hold them on your fingers yeah you hold them on your fingers and they uh, they They're blindfold ones. them yeah. which is another interesting thing and then they try to figure out which is heavier it, it's it, there's a very minuscule difference but i think it's very important for them to you know understand it yes. okay so what's next the sound boxes so it's um, obviously for hearing and here we are listening to different um, sounds in terms of loud, soft and the children would be pairing. So it's okay. a pairing activity to discriminate different sounds. Oh nice! Yes. Okay, so this one has... They sound similar? Yeah, so they could be the same. So they put them... Ah, pair. okay. So, so is actually, there another one? Actually, you would pair it with this. Oh, so, okay. So the pairing would go with this. So the same? Closer to your ear? This is louder. Mm -hmm. So then keep one aside. So you're always trying to pair with the other. Ah, okay. Uh, ah, this is way different. This is... Can you hear the difference? This is very obvious. <laughs> Thank God there was something obvious. <laughs> she would be questioning, you all would also be questioning, who is this person hosting this channel? <laughs> it wasn't my fault. It was the same sound box, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Okay. Now the last one in sensorial activities. Touch tablets. So it's all about the touch sense. Okay. Rough. Smooth. It basically has different textures if you can see it. So this one is rough and this one is smooth. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see the difference between the two? So it's all sensorial. And the child would be able to do another sorting activity with this. Ah, so okay. with the blindfold again and finding all the rough and finding all the smooth. And nice. then they'll pile the two together. Nice. Now we move on to the third skill, which is the language skill. What do we start off with first? The I spy game. So I spy game, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, again, very easy to make at home. Lots of small objects that the children love. You know, children at age two, three, they love putting things in their hands. So yeah. they're very attracted to this activity. So what they learn with the I Spy game, as we all know, I Spy, but we teach them in Montessori phonetically. Okay. Oh, okay. So we would, for example, have mm, and so we would say, I spy with my little eyes, something in my hand, beginning with mm, 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 mirror. for mirror. Ah, okay. Yeah. So they would learn that sound, uh, that words are broken up into sounds through this activity. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. That is why she's been obsessed with this game because she comes home and then this is what my daughter says, okay? So she'll be like, so she'll not pick it up from a box and all because I didn't know y'all were doing it in school. Yes. So this is what she'll do. She'll pick up some random object of hers in hand and she'll be like, I spy with my eye something that begins with K. K for 
of button and i'm like what is scarf of button <laughs> but yeah now i know where she gets this from okay so after they know enough sounds uh, in the ice spy we introduce them to the sandpaper letters so here they now learn the visual so okay yeah so montessori also doesn't teach uh, i think you all don't start with a b c d you all do abacord right Next. if you can just explain that because then they'll probably be able to understand why it's e mm and z and not z so the idea in montessori education is to teach them writing before reading okay, okay. and um, it's more natural to learn the the sounds rather than the alphabet the yeah. alphabet doesn't really teach you reading right, right. so right. words are broken up of sounds. sounds so the idea is teach phonetically so they learn how to read in that logical way breaking putting sounds together hmm. um but like i said initially we do writing so we would teach them the sandpaper letters hmm. and then we would be move on to what we call the, the uh, next acti activity which is movable alphabet movable alphabets okay yeah where they actually make words okay so once they know enough of these sounds hmm. they would be able to make their own words Okay, ah, so the okay. idea is that they, a uh, child, well, any, any for anyone, it's more natural to express your own thoughts rather than read someone else's thoughts. Right. Okay, so, um, so just say the child wants to word, make the word mat. Okay. Okay, so we, they would know the first sound is m. Mm. Mm. This is a movable alphabet. So this is where they start making their own words. <clears throat> so they can make just say they want to make mat so mm. what's the next sound after mm? so this is how the mat looks so it's like a notebook right mm. yeah ah what's the next sound after ah t t t t t okay is there another sound after t mat mm. is it no so we've made the word mat Nice. That's the first level of second level of language skills. Mm -hmm. Okay, lovely. What do we have next? Yes, like I said, we are back to the dreaded math skills. You please start. You introduce all of them. I I don't even want to introduce them. Maybe you'd start liking maths if you um, saw the maths. I'm song. scared of maths. <laughs> I'm scared. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully, I'll start liking it. So we'll start with the spindle boxes. Uh, so the spindle box, uh, you see the uh, the sequence. So one, two, three, up to ten, hmm. uh, and you see zero there. So the purpose of this activity is to put the spindles according according to the number. Yes. So yeah. usually maths is taught taught positionally at home. Yeah. Right. And even sometimes in traditional education here. We have the loose counting and the fixed counting, which makes a child really understand that this is one, this is, this is two, this is three. Yeah. Uh, and in this activity, you'll realize when they finish all the spindles, there's nothing left. Right. Nothing left. So, so that's zero. What we put in here, they'll question. Huh. Nothing. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So zero means nothing. So okay. that's the spindle boxes. And similarly to the, with like we have for the language. Yeah, the sandpaper that we showed earlier in the language skills. We have the uh, sandpaper ciphers. Ciphers, so sorry. Again, they would be tracing this, which will build their muscle memory to prepare them for writing numbers, like likewise for the language. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the right age to introduce a pen? or rather introduce writing to them because yeah even a one year old and a two year old they will hold a fat crayon or a pen or a pencil or whatever it is in the hand mm -hmm. and they will trace but what is the right age to introduce actual writing according to montessori it all depends on the child okay so there's lots of indirect preparation which is happening in the environment right so painting uh, like you said the crayons they when they trace uh, shapes hmm. um, and then when their hand is ready we introduce them to an activity called uh, metal insets so they learn how to hold the pencil and control Oh, okay. okay okay and so when that is happening and we then and they are traced they've traced all the numbers and the letters hmm. uh, we will there'll be a natural progression to writing so it'll be very organic they they know how to hold the pencil 
they've been tracing the sandpaper numbers and the letters okay so it would be very natural so i would say if you want to give an age yeah because probably, there are parents who do panic mm -hmm. after a certain age saying oh my god my child is still not writing yes so that, what's the panic button when do you press the panic button i, I wouldn't have her but, <laughs> but i would say um on an average if i want to say maybe after the age of three three and a half uh, children start doing the initial practicing. Which oh, might be that's even quite early. I thought it would be like five three, or something. Yeah, three and a half, four sometimes. But oh, we're wow. not saying they'll be, they'll be on the paper and pencil. Hmm. It, it might be the chalk and slate. Okay. It all depends on when Absolutely. the child is Yeah, born. of course, of course. Makes sense. Yes, the next one. So after that, <coughs> we have uh, one of my favorite activities, which is a golden bead material. So here you, uh, the t children, learn the sensorial impression that uh, a thousand is this much bigger than a hundred and oh, okay. this is a hundred is this much bigger than a, a, a ten and okay so each one so that say for example that one slab has hundred beads mm -hmm. so exactly so if if you see this yeah. it has ten pens okay and similarly this has ten ten hundreds thousand and the unit there's 10 units oh okay so with this material they will learn a lot they'll learn mm. the quantity and the decimal system work they'll mm. learn place value mm. and they'll learn all the operations for this material okay okay so they'll learn addition subtraction division multiplication all through this material so it'll be the initial concept building okay. of uh, mathematics it will come through this and then they will go towards abstraction okay i'm again going to ask you the same question i'm yes you said it's you know it depends on every child every child is different but for something like this because it is pretty advanced for say a toddler um what is the right age to introduce this this uh, when do you decide ki, okay you know what he or she has reached this level so now i can introduce so again, this material, there's a progression in the mathematics. So right. they would start the initial activity, which is called number rods, and then go on to the spindle boxes. Generally, again, averagely, I would say about three and a half, four. But a lot of indirect preparation is happening. Okay. And initially, when they do uh, do the first activities, it might take them a while to really master it. So mm. we don't rush them to master of it. Of course, yeah. To kind of you know because their brain development is happening at the same time, so we want that to consolidate fully before they move on to these sorts of activities. Right. Okay. Fair. Okay. And the last one, and fractions. Last. I used to be very scared fractions. of these as a child. Very scared. So I think I think you would not be if you. Were. Of course not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so fractions, as you can see, is a puzzle. Okay, so fraction puzzles. So when they come in at the younger ages, they're just doing it as a normal puzzle. And as they grow They're probably older, just trying to fit the pieces together. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and then as they get older, we can teach them concepts of fractions. So hmm. this would be one of two. The seed is two, this, this is one of two. Hmm. Right? And then this is one of three. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's just so visual. Yeah. And the impression is this built and they can learn the fraction in that way. This is a whole, this is one of two, this is one of three. Yeah, and then obviously four. the numbers will, the pieces will get smaller yeah. and smaller as a child. Exactly, and we can label it, there are five or five, six year olds, so we put labels on there so they understand. And sometimes we could even do operations. So some oh. of our five, six year olds are doing operation work on this. So we can do, um, if we had two of this, we, we'll say, okay, we are, let's add, one of two plus one of two. What's that? Ah. Okay, let's put it together. You see, we get okay one. Yeah. Yes. Or the same with this one of three. Yeah. One of three is two. Yes. Three. See, this is what I. I mean, this is one of the reasons why you know we decided to sort of do this video. It's yes, there are multiple toys available. There is everything possible you could probably think of available today, especially in India, which was not the case back then. But are we doing justice to what we are buying for your child? I mean, are you doing, are you making the most of everything that you're buying? I mean, it's not about, you know, buying them 10 toys and, you know, being happy about it. Yes, the fun part is definitely there, but how can you actually make use of every 
product that you're buying for your child and for yourself obviously uh i thank you so much i mean it's you're been welcome. really it's a, it's been a great experience i hope you all like whatever she shared what we spoke about the products that we spoke about and uh, hopefully you know apart from the regular toys and books and whatever it is that you know we end up buying we start focusing on you know trying to uh, buy such products uh, which are you know which will help the child to become more independent more confident more uh, you know start letting them think by themselves rather than extremely directed learning which and i think that's the best way i mean i genuinely believe that uh, especially till i think by till 5 or 6 at least play is the best way to learn more than you know the old form that we used to have during our day especially in india i don't know about you kem sure it was different there but during our time it was completely different thank you so much for all the information uh if you guys want have any questions we will uh we we are going to be already put the link of her website in the description box uh then you then she can decide whether she can share her number with you all because i'm sure there are going to be a lot of queries and we have also shared the products the links of all the products in the description box below so you can see them more in detail uh some of them you already have at home so you know i mean if you don't have the time right now to buy them or check them out online some of them you can just start off you can start the activities at home it's never too late and uh, don't forget to subscribe for the weekly updates and i will see you next time thank you so much thank you. thanks guys thank, thank you. you so much